This is going to be the kickoff of a series where we look at mainly YouTube critics, but others as well, and how commentators will look at this or that fiction, film, or other project, and kind of respond and try to be productive as well as being very critical about what they're saying. So we're going to start with Maggie Mayfish. If you know some of the other essays I've done on her, I've been fairly negative in terms of how she views Zack Snyder. But in this one, we're looking at her taking on Rambo. And surprise, surprise, uh, it's fairly decent. I think most of the essay is very well done. Now, in terms of the larger framework, I don't really agree with her. She's basically looking at how war veterans are being looked at in terms of film. I think Rambo's a good case study, though. I think she gets a couple of major things wrong. But let me say what she gets right, and I think that's very, very interesting and valuable. One is that there's this kind of right-wing myth that protesters were spitting at Vietnam War veterans, and she rightly notes this has been exhaustively looked at, and there's no basis for it. So that, I thought, was probably the strongest part of the essay. She's also correct that Rambo is usually put on the right, and that is correct. However, there are elements there that people skip over where Rambo is kind of like this symbolic representation of people who were not wanted or sort of like this the other in sort of American society. And he's just trying to figure out what's going on with his own life and is being assaulted and insulted by various other people for no reason. So he's kind of an interesting symbolic representation of what usually you find in left-wing films. I thought that was correct and that was very well said. But then of course being Maggie Mayfish she gets a lot of things wrong and she goes into these tangents about what she suspects they were up to with Rambo. Some guy. He's a Green Beret, a decorated war vet who is back in America and left adrift. It completely changes the power dynamic that the cops were relying on, and still rely on. If you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place, buddy. To cover up their own abuse and misuse of power. It points to the hypocrisy of a government that sends young people off to faraway countries to die in the name of freedom, but refuses to support those same veterans if they return home in a condition all right, so the basic cut here is that Rambo started off well, but then it became this kind of very cartoon series with Rambo being a complete outright fascist, just destroying and killing everything. He began with communists in the 1980s, but then he moved on to terrorists, and more recently, again, I guess, truck dealers? Again, it just seems like there's no real point to the mythology anymore. He just gets up, destroys stuff, we clap, and we're like, good. Rambo's destroying stuff. So I agree that the series did degenerate, but I actually question how political it is at the very beginning. She makes it seem as if there was already a big right-wing agenda. I have no doubt that they basically did have an agenda, but if you actually do research on this and look at it closely, it was basically just a money project. And in fact, the original ending for Rambo, Rambo was killed off, and they only reversed themselves because of test screenings. And Sylvester Stallone himself, and again, I'm not apologizing for Sylvester, I don't like the fact that he was very supportive of a lot of these right-wing causes. I mean, including, technically, Osama bin Laden, if you get down to it. So, he's been very uh, murky on that. But, as he says, you know, he actually agreed with the original Troutman. The original Troutman was not who we get with Krenna. It was actually supposed to be Kirk Douglas. And Douglas wanted Rambo to die, and Sylvester Stallone agreed with him, saying, yeah, you're right, he's gonna die, but not in this movie. And it's like, no, no, he has to die. And it's like, no, I'm with you, he will die, but not in this movie. And eventually Kirk Douglas left the project over disagreements, but Sylvester Stallone was never really invested in Rambo. For him, it was just a role. He didn't even want to be in the movie, he was just going to produce it, but more and more, it was like, they really needed somebody. And he fit the bill, and he decided to do it. And I congratulate him for being so physically committed, but really he never meant it to be like Rocky Part 2, where this is like the, his second most f known film role. It was really just a money project. They thought it would do well. It did way better than they ever expected. They thought, wow, we've got a gold mine. And after that, it just became, yeah, a pretty silly neo-fascist nonsense that did very well in the 1980s and they kept now are adapting it to new circumstances. But once upon a time, it did have a much more serious point. And she's very good in articulating its much more serious side at the very beginning. Though I think she's being a little too generous at, as to what they're being up to. And also, I think she's seeing a lot much more of a political point where, uh, to me, it really was, at the end of the day, just very much a capitalist product. But you'd have to give the producers a lot of credit because nobody wanted to make it when they were doing it. So it is relatively 
well, we wouldn't want to call it a rebellious product, but it was a kind of independent movie when it began. Well, a much more serious and somber point that we're making about what Rambo symbolized. So it is an interesting movie. I do think, though, it's still very disturbing on many levels, because even if it is mostly about commerce, it does do, I think, a lot of damage in terms of understanding what the war meant and just what war is in general. But that's my opinionation. All right, this has been a look at Maggie Mayfish taking on the war veteran in film history.